this video warning this vi <laughs> warning this is a long video but i hope you'll stay along for it all thank you at any rate i want to say thank you um we've already passed a milestone and i was supposed to do something and i didn't do it um, I said at 500 subs that I was going to do a Q&A video, so here is the intro for the Q&A. Shout out to uh, my sis, Red Feather Gotti. I saw her do this, and I thought it was kind of cool, so I don't know if it'll be enough people interested to even have questions to answer, but here it goes. So what you need to do is at the bottom of this video in the comments, make a question. Make a question. Yeah, make question, a question. That you want to know. I do reserve the Stop right. talking. Stop, stop, be, be quiet. Oh, that guy is annoying. What's good, you of the tube? It is your boy, OG Sneakers, back in the building. And, um, yeah, I'm just chilling today. Um, and the point of this, the point of showing that footage, I don't even know if you could hear the audio because I have the microphone and the phone was up to the camera and somehow that just doesn't work. But anyway... I did a video called Lunch with OG, where I just want to have quick conversations. And the very first one uh, was me soliciting questions. I was supposed to do, I said that I would do a question and answer video when I hit a particular milestone, and that was 500 subs. We've actually passed that milestone, and I didn't do the video. And I want to try to be a man of my word, so I'm going to answer the questions. So I solicited your questions in that first Lunch with OG video. And now I'm gonna answer the questions. I'm gonna scroll down, hopefully from my phone, I can see all of the questions. So the first question is from Jacoby Wall, and it says, how long have you been collecting sneakers and what was your first pair? I've been actively collecting sneakers, Jacoby, since 2013. And my first pair while I was collecting that I purchased was Powder Blue Tins. It wasn't the first pair that I wanted, but it was the first pair that I collected. And no matter what I do, I'll never get rid of this shoe for two reasons. First, let me say the shoe that I was looking for was the Bread Force. Swing and a miss. So, these are important because this was the first pair of shoes that I bought and I bought them not so much because I like them, but because my oldest daughter was crazy gaga for them. And we were, we did the sneaker twins. I liked it. Tens is not necessarily my most favorite silhouette, but I liked it. And we got those shoes together and I'll always keep these that it be uh, significant for me. And I think she still has her pair. I'm pretty sure she does. I'm saying I think because sometimes we gift their shoes when they get too small to friends of ours who have younger kids that, you know, they come and they see the sneakers and they're like, whoa, this is great. And then we send them home with a pair of sneakers that, you know, my daughters can't wear anymore. And, you know, people have blessed us in any number of different ways. So to be able to share in that way, um, it just does me really good. And it also teaches my kids a very important lesson. So um, no matter if I get rid of this, I will probably put this in my will that she has to keep this, or she can have this sneaker. It should be hers. And um, maybe if I have a grandson, it's a long ways off though, um, he'll be big enough to fill grandpa's shoes. I'm sure that the answer to that question leaves other questions, and I'll try not to answer those questions because maybe that'll be for another video, 
or maybe we'll get to it before. So those are Jacoby's two questions. Uh, the next is from my sneaker sis, uh, Red Feather Gotti. Shout out to you, sis. So her question is, what sneaker brings back the most memories for you? Uh, and I'll, then I'll ask, the, and, and the second question, part of a second question is, and what sneaker do you wish would come back out again? Okay, I'll answer the second one first. I hope, I want that the Black Cement 3s and the White Cement 3s, but specifically the Black Cement 3s drops again because I have a 2001 OG pair, which is the old, the, like, but the Black Cement 3s are my grail. The uh, OG Black Cement 3s, um, the heel tabs are uh, cracking and I need to get them um, Oh, what is the word? Uh, restored. Uh, but I really want to get a new pair in hand. So hopefully they drop this year. I really want that to happen. All right. So the first part of your question was um, what sneaker brings back the most memories for you? Two sneakers bring back the most memories for me. And because of my age, I know one of them, the majority of you have probably never heard of. I'm old enough to have remembered and experienced sneakers before Jordan was popular because Mike, Michael Jordan, I don't call him Mike because I don't know him like that. Michael Jordan and I are close to the same age, within months of each other. I want to say maybe he's seven or eight months older than me. Do the Google and figure that out. So when I was coming up, the shoes that were popular, Converse, and some independent brands. There was a brand of shoes called Jox, J-O-X. The company is now defunct now. It was sold by a shoe retailer. Um, I don't know if they were all over the U.S., but at that time we were living in the Midwest. I'm originally from the Midwest. And the retailer was called Tom McCann. Pretty much up until that particular time, all shoes, this even predates leather issues to my remembrance. Pretty much all sneakers were canvas. That was it, they were canvas. Tom McCann and some other companies, I guess along with Blue Ribbon Sports, if you don't know who that is, look it up, you'll figure it out, ushered in the use of other materials other than canvas, like nylon. But the first suede shoe I ever saw was a low-top jocks basketball shoe. It was blue, and their logo was kind of like the tiger, tigre, I don't know what you call it. Well, it was tiger, now it is what came before Asics. It was similar to that. So it was all blue with white kind of plastic type of logo going around along uh, the midfoot. I wanted that shoe so bad. I don't even remember, honestly, how much it cost. I know that it was more than Converse because when I asked for the shoe, my father was like, what you talk about, Willis? I, he, no, he wasn't like that. He was, my father was not a big user of profanity. He used words that I didn't understand and that how he could blow me off. <laughs> Quick story, totally not related. Grew up in Chicago. Uh, if you're familiar with the Chicago area and the stockyards in downtown, uh, the police, Chicago police used to have auctions. They'd auction off all the stuff that they got from robberies and so forth. They couldn't find the owner and they, um, uh, nobody claimed it. They would sell it and I don't know what they did with the money. Gave it to the policeman's endowment or something, I don't know, anyway. 
We go to this auction. My father used to go all the time. He'd get all kinds of stuff that we couldn't use, bowling balls, stuff like that. Well, I couldn't say, I shouldn't say couldn't use. Things that I didn't think were worth anything. Anyway, um, I wanted a big wheel. Maybe I was six or seven. However old I was, I was old enough to still ride a big wheel. You don't know what a big wheel is? Again, check Google. I'm not going to take the time to explain to you. You probably figure it out. <laughs> anyway, Daddy, Daddy, can we get the big wheel? Son, we are not going to spend money on frivolous frills. Frivolous frills to a seven-year-old. Really, Dad? Thanks. Anyway, so that's the type of guy my dad was. So whatever he told me about getting those jocks, I knew it wasn't going to happen unless I bought them. I don't think I ever bought them. I think I got some of the nylon track jocks, but whatever my little sub-minimum wage job I was making at the Orange Julius, I, the suede's were out of my reach, and Dad wasn't going to help me, so it wasn't going to happen. Um, so that's the answer to your question, what shoe brings back the most memories for me. That, that is really, really a very, mm, I can see, when I close my eyes, I can see that on the counter, they had these little circular sneaker, or sh not sneaker, shoe, because Tom McCann sold, sold all kinds of shoes. But that blue jock just stood out in a sea of nothingness. It was kind of like, ah, when I, when I saw it. All right, so the next question comes from, it just says R. So R, you know who you are. Uh, your question is, two questions. What are my thoughts on the LeBron 14s? I want to like the LeBron 14s. I'm getting kind of frustrated with these one-piece uh, construction shoes because sometimes they're very difficult to get on or over time as your feet swells later in the day or whatever, they're uncomfortable to wear. So I haven't tried it on, I don't know, but I, I wanna like it. So far I haven't seen a colorway that I care for. Um, and name two pair of shoes you purchased and later wish you passed on. Hmm. The Royal One Lowe's, just because the colorway is great, but the material sucks. And hmm. The second pair. Nike Cortez, not because, and I, I wish I had a passed on them because I didn't get them in my size. I love the shoe because like when, that, that shoe reminds me of high school. And when I was in school, that was like what a lot of people were wearing, both people who ran track and then just people that, basketball players, when they weren't playing, just kind of style. Um, so I really, really remember that shoe. But when they dropped the leather ones, I got the black and white, and then I got the red, white, and blue, which is the one that I really, really remember. Um, I couldn't get my size, so I got a 12. And when I wear them, the sides kind of gap out, and I really hate that. So I wish I had it passed and got my size. That's just what I thought of right now. There's probably a better answer, but that's my answer. I'm sticking with it. Um... Okay, this question comes from Thomas McCargo. How many kicks do you have in your collection, and how do you feel about the violence that goes on at sneaker releases? Um, I really hate any type of crazy behavior, violence that goes on at sneaker. It's just shoes. I mean, I get upset if I don't get it. I understand that, but just all going in and, and that gang mentality, even just the, you know, cursing and just going all crazy and, you know, the N-word every five seconds and all that. It's, 
crazy people out there now that could just, at the flick of a switch. And I'm not, I just, I just don't like to see the world like that. I don't want to raise my kids in a world like that. But I am raising my kids in a world like that. So I detest it. I don't like it. If you're party to it, I wish you would stop. Um, it just is not that crucial. It really isn't. Um, and I'm really sad for it. I really am because I think it gives, not I think, I know it gives the game a bad name. How many kicks? I'm going to answer this way. At a certain point, at a certain milestone, I'm going to do a collection video without giving an exact number because I just don't really want to do that. And I hope you're okay with that. I'm going to say more, more than that. Uh, more pairs than I need. Is that good enough? At least 50 times two and probably more than that. Over 100. Exactly what over 100? I don't know. But yeah, I need to cut back because that's a lot of shoot. The Sneaker Dome asks, where's my picture? Bruh, I'm going to do the tin collection. I don't know when. You, as you can see, these videos and soul food and my teenage daughters and my wife and my family and the other part of my life is keeping your boy popping. But I, I promise you, there's two shoes that I'm going to shoot in the next poster collection that I do. Tens and eights. Tens for you, eights for Jumpman. So, yes, it's coming. Promise you. I got, I got to do something with that city pack, so it's coming. Even though you just threw it in as a joke. I'm still going to answer the question. But please don't hold me to a time frame. Uh, my top three Jordans. Uh, this is from uh, TJ Glado. Respect. What's going on, sneaker brother? Uh, top three Jordan silhouettes. And top three non-Jordans. Okay. Top three non-Jordans. Uh, Reebok questions. Um... Hmm, Sacconi's now, I'm, I, can I just fudge on that? And, because really, really got some nice stuff that Dabs has turned me on to about that. So Sacconi's and anything with Boost. Yeah, anything with Boost. I really like Boost. I think it's very comfortable. So there's a lot of shoes. So can I just get away with those three for the non-Jordan? It's probably not good enough, but for now. I'm doing this off the cuff. I didn't write it down off the dome. I, I probably have to think about that a little bit more. The Jordans I can do. Number one is threes. Um, I'd probably say threes, fours, and 23s. So Pro Kicks ask, hey, OG, I was wondering, how have you grown as much as you have along with obtaining shoes fairly rapidly? Wow, that's a really personal question. I don't know how you answer that. Um, I have a day job and I have three side businesses. And I guess that's the answer to your question. I don't know if you mean how have I grown on YouTube or... Um, I really don't know. People say that they have an idea of how to grow. I don't have a clue. Um, I know that my channel received an enormous blessing and boost uh, when um, uh, Dabs and Shoe Mama from the Sneaker Family uh, highlighted me and brought some attention to me. And after that, I think I started to, you know, do a little bit more work. Dabs has been doing videos and stuff. He had a channel. He shut it down. He started again. Uh, so he gave me, you know, some really good advice about certain things. And I've been trying to take that advice, but also, you know, kind of do what works for me as well. So, um, yeah, the growth is due to you guys. I just try to, whatever I try to do, I try to, I try to do good. I try to be decent. I try, there's so many people out there. I don't know that I'm going to say I try to be different. I just try to be me, and whatever I do, I try to have a level of quality with it. One of, one of the very first comments I remember somebody giving me when the channel was really small, like less than 20 followers, 
um, or 20 subs, sorry, a person came to me and said, you have the best video for anybody that I know that has nine subs on YouTube. And that may or may not have been meant as shade. I did not take it as shade. I took it as a compliment. And, um, you know, I'm still trying to keep that mentality. Like I only got nine subs and I still want to give the best that I can give so that, uh, you know, the quality stays good. So from Illa Ills, that's the homie over in uh, Chi-Town. What's good? Um, do you feel Adidas is surpassing Nike at the sneaker tech at this current time? No, I actually wouldn't say that Nike or that Adidas is um, surpassing Nike. I think the tech, the boost that um, Adidas has come up with has um, galvanized a greater following. But I think technically Nike continues to push the envelope. Um, or not push the envelope, push forward in terms of their technology. I think that people really don't, most people that are into Nike are not into tech. They're into nostalgia. They, you know, some people are like, if you're Jordans, you're only, you know, one through 14, that's it. Anything after 14, you, you're not thinking about. I'm not that, that, that guy, but, um, or, you know, they're into Air Max and they're into OG Air Max uh, or they whatever they choose to be. But they're they're into that for the nostalgia of it. They're not into it for technology. Um, then you have on the other spectrum, Adidas is winning with all these younger kids that are, you know, they're just they're um, Steph Curry fans and they love Yeezys or anything with Boost, NMDs. Jamal Ray asked, uh, besides the sneaker family, who are some of the YouTubers you enjoy watching? Man, this is a hard question because, you know, I could probably say some of the people more that I did watch previously. Um, I used to watch Bull. I used to watch uh, Tony D2 Wild. Um, I love um, and still do. Don't watch him as much. Don't watch really any of them as much. But um, Cousteau, Jacques Slade. The Ryan Seacrest of sneakers. I didn't make that up. I forgot who I stole that from. I love Jacques Slade. Bro, if you ever see this video, um, really, really love what you do. Really, really love and respect what you do. Not to say that I don't respect anybody else, but that's I really feel what he does. Uh, Fomer Simpson, um, Mike Rich. Before I really went in and started doing YouTube the way I am now, Mike Rich was my staple. That was, I watched him more than anything. Um, we're nowhere close to, in age. Um, if I had it started when I was really young, Mike could be my son. But uh, because I went to school in Atlanta and just the cadence of his talking reminded me of so many guys that I went to college with uh, and just living, reminded me of living in Atlanta and, and some other uh, friends that I have that are from Atlanta and still live there. And also uh, his interaction with his son just reminded me of my interactions with my daughters. And uh, I just thought that was dope and I like to watch him. So uh, that's some, that's not all, uh, but those are just uh, some of the ones that I mentioned. Um, there's some newer ones that I've watched, like people who rock with me, I'm gonna check out You know what they're doing, um, uh, like, uh, uh, what's my man in Richmond? Uh, 804, King of Foams and Jays. Um, Mr. Meadows. Uh, gosh, um, I know there's a couple other. Um, I tell you somebody who I enjoy who's on one of our sister shows. When I say R, the Soul Food sister show that's a part of the Monday Mid Soul is uh, Daniel, One Legged Lister. Uh, some of the stuff that he does is really dope. I like it. Um, there's a guy who is a, a customizer. He's Pierre something I can't think of. Uh, but his cinematic style is dope. I really like it. And I used to watch him. But again, um, I really don't get a chance to watch as much other YouTubers as myself. And sometimes I don't watch them because when I give you guys like my opinion and we talk, I don't necessarily want to be tainted by seeing so much other people and kind of giving you their take as opposed to what my take is. So it's like you can't watch as much. 
uh, there's only so many hours in a day. And I do have to watch my empire. But I digress. You, okay, so this question is from Adarimi. At a Remy 64. Okay, your name being OG, sneaker, OG Sneakers, do you like and have any OG vintage sneakers in your collection or is the OG for you being a vet in the sneaker culture? Well, I already told you how long, so I don't think you would consider that a vet. Actually, I picked the name was because I'm an older guy and I like kicks. So I just thought OG Sneakers. Um... I think the oldest shoes that I have in my collections, um, I told you, are one of my grails, which is a 2001 pair of the Black Cement uh, threes with the uh, Nike Air on the bottom, uh, or backside. And I have a pair of one of the original colorways of the Dub Zeros. It's the um, black and tannish color, and I want to say those are like uh, 99, 2000, something like that. Still wearable, as a matter of fact, too. Uh, those are the two oldest shoes I have in my collection. Uh, what are my thoughts on 90 basketball sneakers, brands like Converse, Team Jordans, LA Gear? Um, and this question is from R Ricardo Bonner. Um, they're dope. I was saying, I really wanted to go back, not go back, I really was interested in getting the um, Flyknit Converse that dropped last weekend because like a lightweight converse is just like heaven to me uh when i played basketball first my first pair of basketball shoes were green chucks like boston celtics green chucks uh and we had gold uniforms somewhere i might have a picture but i don't think i'll ever show it but at any rate yes uh lime green not lime greens celtic green chucks and when i first got them well, I ain't going to tell that part of the story. But anyway, yes. Um, I do like to see them. Um, LA Gears. I remember them. I can't necessarily say that. I would probably like to see like some real good quality, like Fila. That's an old school brand to me that was really popular that I... They're still selling them, but the quality is not there in terms of the material. I would like somebody to do like at least a couple series of some feelers with some really nice premium materials used on them. Ali Vida. And the question is, what made me start this channel? And what are my ultimate goals in the ideal internet or my ultimate goals in an ideal internet world for the channel? I started the channel because... I felt like I had a voice that I wanted to share, and I felt like, and I apologize for sniffling, uh, it's allergy season for me, um, I felt like there were not a lot of people from my, lack of a better way to say it, age group or perspective that I was seeing their faces, and they were there. Uh, I just didn't necessarily see them because I had to get past, you know, the Fomers and Bulls and Tony D's and Mike Riches of the world. Not to say that any of those, there's anything wrong with those cats, but I had to find, I really had to start actually doing YouTube to really start to come across. And what I found is that there's a huge community of people, I'm going to say, like in that Grown man, grown woman, I'm going to say 40 and up. Maybe I'll dip back in. No, uh, yeah, 40 and up. And I think you bring a different experience, a different uh, perspective to this sneaker thing. And so I felt like I just wanted to give it a try. And I ran across a couple of videos of the people that were doing them. They were like, hey, you know, if you want to do, just do it. Don't wait. Don't wait till you have the perfect camera. Don't wait till you have the perfect lighting set up. Don't, uh, don't, don't. Just freaking do it. So I thought about it and I almost started. And I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. The tipping post for me was my kids, my daughters. Oh, man. I talk about them a lot because I really, my pride and joy, best thing I've ever done. And I didn't do that by myself. God bless me with an incredible wife and 
Uh, he blessed us with those kids. Not going to go into it, but let me just say it. Suffice to say that, you know, if man had had his choice, uh, we wouldn't have any children. So the fact that we have two beautiful daughters that are smarter than I've ever been, walking around and talking and healthy, um, is nothing but God's grace. Having said that, they encouraged me. Like, I talked to them. I was like, you know, if I did this, would it embarrass you? Would it embarrass you? You know, what do you think of it? And they were like, dude, do it. Um, and then in the beginning, like, I didn't show my face. I was just going to do sneakers and kind of be off camera. And they were like, no, you got to get in front of the camera. So I got in front of the camera. And... Um, just by way of information, my background is in communications. I worked in radio and television before. Um, now I do something else. But they were like, Daddy, don't use your work voice. Like, just do you. Like, when we're hanging out, do that. You. That's the you that you need to do. And I'm still trying to, in my opinion, really find that me. But, yeah. It's getting there. I didn't go into YouTube to make money. It would be nice if I made more so that I could, you know, cover some of the expenses for some of the things that I have. But like, you know, a more expensive camera is not a bad investment for me because I'm also a professional photographer. So it works. But YouTube ain't paying for that. Um, YouTube is not paying for any of the kicks in my bought a couple shoelaces that's really about it uh, so it would be nice to grow it in a way that there was a, a, a larger stream uh, but I mean I guess my ultimate goal in it is just continue to grow get better enjoy it sneakers and YouTube has allowed me to meet people that I would have never met before uh, to have you know friendships or acquaintances through social media to visit places and actually meet and sit down and have a meal with people um, uh, you know to really meet some really really dope people and uh, for me that's very satisfying um, and if I don't do anything else you know that will have been really dope would I want to do more man we all walk away and leave stuff on the table but I think that's enough I'm just going to share this, not because it really, there was any question. Um, wow, this is really messing me up right now. Um, but outside of my kids, mm, and my wife, um, this is it for me right here. Try to get this angled so the well, yeah, there's a light so you kind of see it. So I'm just gonna show this right now because I'm getting kind of messed up. Um, yeah, that's that dude I talked about, and man, that's the best woman I ever knew. Um, whoo, I didn't expect for to feel like this. Uh, appreciate you guys watching the video. This is really, really long video, and I need to figure out how I'm going to make this work, but um, y'all know the deal is your boy OG Sneakers. Wishing all of you. Mm. Damn. Peace. I can't do it, family. I miss him like crazy. Man, sometimes, you know, it just comes out of no place. Um, both my parents are in heaven, and, uh, man, I never thought I would be this young and be out here on my own, but not to say that I don't have friends and family. I, I do, but it's nothing like your mother and your father. Woo, before this runs out, do me a favor. If you like this video, I know it was long, I apologize. Like, comment, 
subscribe. I'll try to get better at answering the questions faster if we do this ever again. I'm probably going to have to do this in two parts. And that wasn't that many questions. My God, what would I do if there were more questions? That would be crazy. But, mmm. As always, you know, it's your boy, OG Sneakers, wishing all of you total sneaker family one love. Hollow.